Well, another episode of Jay Lano's Garage. Uh, if you've been to this website, you know we are huge motorcycle enthusiasts. And uh, something exciting has been happening in the motorcycle world the last couple of years. A lot of boutique manufacturers, uh, small guys, designers, engineers, they get together and they produce essentially custom bikes. And that's what these are. These are called Ronins. They're out of uh, Denver, Colorado. And uh, they're actually building them and selling them. This isn't a pipe dream where they built one and you have to order it. They probably sold... 20 or 30 bikes already. Let's meet Mike Mayberry. Mike, come on in. You're one of the founders? Mm-hmm. Good to see you. Nice to see you. See, Likewise. we have the same fashion consultant. Good, right. good. Because this show is not about fashion. <laughs> it's about cars and motorcycles. So that's exactly where we're coming from. So tell me how you founded this company. Where'd the idea come from? Well, the idea originally came from, uh, it was a design exercise. We um, were big fans of Buell, and we had uh, seen, a, it was actually a magazine ad that came out a long time ago that showed the 1125 stripped down to its bare frame and mm -hmm. engine. And um, it was the first bike that Buell had come out with with a water-cooled engine. They had Rotax design. It was a great performing motor. And right. we thought the, the bones of the bike were quite gorgeous. And then we got excited to see the finished bike come out. And when, and when it finally came out, we they had covered most of it in plastic bodywork. Right, and right. Had kind of lost the, the essence. And you know the, the lines of the bike have some original um, cues from some of the vintage perimeter frame bikes sure. back in the early 20s and we were always a fan of that and we were also big fans of the Vincent Black Shadow and Linkage Forks. See, I don't trust any motorcycle I can't see through. Uh -huh. You know, I like to be able to see daylight through. I hate it when the whole bike is completely covered right. with plastic, right. you know, unless it's a dustbin fairing from the 50s and I, then I, I go, okay. But yeah, I see you have this sort of, uh, the Vincent had what they call a hydraulic front end on it. Here's, here's a picture of the Vincent front end. What that looks like. It looked like it's two knife blades. And the advantage of that was it kept the bike, when you hit the brakes, the front end didn't dive. It didn't go down. Is this a true uh, hydraulic type front end? It, or is it yep. Well, it's a four bar linkage front end, mm -hmm. same basic construction. And it does let you control what the fork does. You right. can control the axle path, you can control the dive, the rise under braking. It, it gives you a lot of freedoms that you don't get out of a telescoping fork. Um, and, and also a a, a, a visual aesthetic that we thought balanced right. out nicely with the bike, but um, I agree with you. I, I like to see a bike where I can see all the parts. And right, right. Now, um, is this using the Buell frame, and you've changed the front end and some other pieces, or it's, is it a different frame? Nope, it's the Buell fuel frame okay. and the Buell rear swing arm. Okay. And we've retained that, and then everything else basically has been re. I always found this fascinating. Buell has what they call this perimeter disc brake, right. and because is it because it's it's so big, you don't only need one on one the side? The idea was, yeah, a larger diameter, right. and more brake, okay. and a, a singular caliper. So we've moved the radiator up to here. Correct. OK. So this, this is a, a water cool, not, that, not an oil cool radiator. That's a, that's a, yes, that's a, a water cool. Yeah, okay. That's a radiator. And you fill it right here, which is uh, Correct. <laughs> pretty easy right yep. there. Oh, OK. This is our speedometer. And I assume speedometer is in the window, and that's yep. the tack there. Yep. Then they're switchable. All your controls are on the left and right sides here. Um, we redid all the air intake system. These are all, all the castings are done in Colorado. Right. <clears throat> um, and um, they're all investment cast aluminum parts and then carbon fiber air box and carbon fiber. So how uh, does this work? Do you buy a bunch of Buells and then you modify them? We bought 50, 50 Buells when Harley Davidson finished the brand. They, right. they shut down the Buell brand, as you know, and we bought 50 bikes at that time that were new, old, basically new inventory bikes. Right, okay. And we warehouse them, and we now pull them out of inventory, and they get completely disassembled down to the, down to the, the, the jugs come off the engine, and we rework the stators, and we rework the flywheel, and then the motor goes back together, and the whole bike comes back together. So, uh, when, it, when I buy one of these, do I have, it, it obviously meets all government emissions and everything, because you haven't really modified the engine, correct? Correct. Yeah. So there's no, it says 50 state compliant and all that kind of stuff? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Is it titled as a Buell or as a Ronin? It retains its original title in the Okay. Bin. Yep. Now, if I had a two or three year old Buell, could I drop it off at you guys and you could modify it into this or you don't do that? We get that question a lot. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, we're only building 47 of them. Oh, that's um, it? That's okay. it, 47. And the extra, we've got 50 bikes total. The other three bikes are test bikes. Uh, okay. One of them's here that we use as a, as a test mule bike. We'll probably keep those when we're done, but right. it's, it's sort of a, 
it's a moment in time. The, the 47 bikes will get built, and then we'll close our doors, and we'll go off and do and something else. And everybody goes, finds another job somewhere. Yeah. Wow. One that pays. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, yeah. Because it's really more labor love building these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, as the, my partner said when we set off, he's like, you know, when we're 80 years old, we'll look back and go, oh, we're glad we did that. And if we don't, then we will regret it. So. Okay. Now, we have a, do we have a couple of different models here, or are they all basically the same? Well, there's there's... The first production run of the silver and black bikes, right. and then we've got one of the, the, the all black bikes, which is the second production run, and then this one's the oddball. This is the original prototype that was built back in 2009. I never understood why Buell was not more successful. I mean, it's a true American <coughs> sport bike in the style of Ducati or in the mm -hmm. Augusta. They were what, eleven thousand five hundred dollars, I think, when they were brand new. Something. I mean, they were for the eleven twenty-five. Yeah, I, think, right I mean, it. they were reasonable. They were. They were priced with Ducatis in there. Yeah, and, yeah. And he, you know, Buell was a performance-minded guy, yeah. and it was all about performance. I um, did. Did Harley not like the fact that you're using Rotax motors? Is that it, maybe, or something? I'm sure that didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably didn't help at all. So. Dude. No, but uh, no, they're fantastic performing bike. How about Eric Buell? Has he seen these? Does he give you any opinion on them? We. Uh, no, not him directly. We we keep contact with EBR Racing. Those guys mm -hmm. are great. They've helped us out. Right. Um, they've helped us do some of the engine updates and um, and get us parts when we need parts. So they've been very helpful. Um, but no, we've never actually had a sit down with Eric himself. I certainly would be curious to hear what he has yeah. to say about it. Okay, so your fuel is here, right? And this Correct. is this the, the tank's just. This is airbox. So right, these right. are your I mean, intakes. Yeah, you're not carrying anything up here. No, so. Well, inside is filter and electronics. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, you, yeah, you all the mass gravity is, is yep. low. And yeah, that was part yeah. of his idea was mass centralization. Okay. So you know, we kept everything that we loved about his bikes and his designs, and then redesigned the parts that we felt. You know, okay. So this is redesigned. new here, the whole front and the steering. Yep. Yep. Uh, this, this is, is nicely integrated. The way you put this, uh, the speedo. Yep. Into here. This so was you, actually inspired by a, an old Lambretta that I that I uh, had with the pressed tin. Handlebars that all integrated. You know, I would not tell the bike guys it was inspired by a Lambretta. That probably might, you know, it just, it just kind of throws out. You don't out like Lambrettas? The, I like Lambrettas, but it's a whole different image. You You're know? true. That's true. Yeah, you can't a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Say MotoGP. Yeah, say. Fair inspired enough. by MotoGP. Okay, well, very good. Okay, and obviously this piece is. Now, are you guys, uh, um, is that what you did? You went to design school? Is that what it was? Were you guys. Yeah, I'm an industrial designer by okay. trade, and um, this was kind of a fun side exercise that we did. And then when we, when we decided we wanted to take the prototype and actually go and produce 47 of them, we actually hired and assembled a team of guys that are all here. And we've got two other industrial designers and a machinist. And a yeah, I mean, that's fascinating GP how mechanic. you come up with that business plan. So do you guys, what, built this bike and then thought, well, people liked it, maybe we should go into the business? Or was it to go into the business from the get-go? It was to go into the business from the get-go. It was oh. basically to to put something out there that might last longer than we do. And yeah, yeah. See see where it goes. Very so. nice, very nice. Yep. Okay. Now, where are your? Do you have turn signals in this? Or is that turn signals are right here on the bars. Oh. So okay. they're all integrated into the mirrors. Oh, nice Everything's done. integrated into. There's a there's a control logic unit in the tail that manages everything. So there's no mechanical relays. It's all solid state relays. Oh, very nice. And that drives the turn signals, the high beams. Um, all of the key electronics. So let's so. see, what's different from the prototype to the production bike? Obviously, you went to a little bigger speedo. Yep, the noticeable things are the integration of the headlights into the forks. You can right. see, this bike was built in eight weeks. Designed okay. and built in eight weeks, for, for and we took it to a trade show. Right. So um, there was a lot of refinement that had to be done in order to take something that was made once and actually make it producible. All the, all the cast parts had to be redesigned so that you could actually pull molds from them. Most of these parts were rapid prototyped. Now, I notice this one, you have the temperature gauge for the water, but I notice that doesn't. That's built into the, into the head there. This was oh, actually, in, this was for us to monitor when we were doing testing. I see. This okay. one, it's, yeah, it's integrated into the, that, that's made in Germany by uh, Motor Gadget. Okay. Now, is this radiator bigger, smaller, same size as Buell had, or what? It is, the frontal area is smaller, but the core depth is, Comparable. I Buell had two okay. thin radiators. We've got one uh, higher density core radiator. Okay, very so, cool. And then, and then obviously cleaner flowing air over the front. Because I've got a Buell next door that I love. It's a fantastic bike. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they're uh, great bikes. They built a race motor, and we got 130, 135 horse out of it. Mm -hmm. And you got to run race fuel, but oh, it's a fantastic bike. That's the air cooled motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes all yeah. the right noises, and it's fast. And yep. 
you know, it's, it's very, very cool. Well, these are about 147 stock horse. Oh, is so, that what it is? Yeah. 147? I didn't realize that yeah. high. Yeah. Now, what, is this, what was the stock Buell? Was that right around that? Yeah, no, the, I mean, the, the, the stock Buell 1125R motor. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's kind of a cool exhaust system. Did you guys make that? Is that aftermarket? What is that? No, nope, that's all our design. Oh, nicely yeah. done. Yep. Let's hear how it sounds. Can we fire it up? Sure. So we power up right here. Okay. Let's... we went for a ride. About ready to go for a ride. What's this bike weigh anyway? Uh, right around 400 pounds. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, 50 pounds down from stock. Oh, all right. Like the bar end mirrors, very nicely done. Now you're hiding something behind your back. What do you have there? <laughs> uh, this is the owner's toolkit. I see. And what is that? Oh, is that like a... It's a little magnetic key that opens it for you. And, I see. And then inside you've got a tool that basically lets you work on any, any fastener on the bike um, or take your aggression out. You Oh I, see, oh, I see, and then, uh, oh, I see, you've got little various pieces yep. in there. Yeah, various fits in there. Very cool. And then your key and uh, uh, your owner's manual. See, every time you ride, you have your man give you the box. Thank you. <laughs> and you seal, seal the box. Then you go for a ride, yes. Well, let me ask you about the Ronin name. Where does that come from? Um, we, we named the bike after the, uh, the, the Ronin legacy of the, the 47 Ronin, which were... Uh, a Ronin's basically a samurai warrior that's lost its master. And when, when they closed Buell, you had all these bikes roaming the street that had sort of lost their master. And so oh, okay. it's sort of an homage to Eric Buell and his legacy. All right, very good. Well, Eric Buell was a great engineer, and these are great motors. So I, I do this, and I'm ready to go, right? Yep. And then I uh, just hit the start button. Put my helmet on. See how she goes. Well, the first impression is I really like the seating position. You know, I like this English style handlebar. You know, cafe bikes look cool, but you know, in traffic when you're hunched over, whereas this is a nice comfortable riding position. The wind holds you up, so it takes all the weight off your arms. So that makes it really nice. It's kind of fun to watch that front end work when you hit the brakes, kind of watch it moving up and down. Actually, you should be watching the road. You know, I like seeing an American-built sport bike. I mean, I like cruises as much as the next guy, but when you ride English bikes or Ducatis and stuff like that, it's fun to have a bike that handles, and it's kind of cool to have one that's made in America like this. And this perimeter brake works fine, you know? I can't remember what the engineering idea was behind. I guess you get with a bigger disc, more surface area, I guess. Because uh, I know old Japanese bikes that had a disc brake just on one side, you know, you'd wear the seal out. You'd blow the seal on this side because the bike would always do that when you hit the brake, but this one doesn't seem to do that. But I've got a uh, Eric Buell bike with this front brake on it, and I love it. I like these bars. This really is a comfortable riding position, because at this speed, we'll be going about eh, 50, 55, two-lane road. The wind holds you up. You don't get a lot of pain, as I said before, in your shoulders. Even in high gear, you got plenty of pull. All the controls are very, very light. It shifts very nicely. And you got all kinds of torque, no matter what gear you're in. You know, this seat is really firm, but it's not uncomfortable. I thought it might be a little hard for us buttockly challenged guys, but it's, it's not. It's actually quite nice. This is a great Sunday morning go for a ride bike. You know, you just pull it out and you go blast up into the hills. You 
know, California really a motorcyclist paradise. There's just so many beautiful roads like this. I mean, it's still winter in every other part of the country. What is it, 75 degrees here today? Fantastic. Boy, this is really a nice bike ride. You know, it, it's got plenty of performance and everything just works. out of here. Well, it's a very nice riding bike. Let me shut off my uh, fuel pump, my, my electric fan here. There you go. You know, a lot of times you have engineers that design bikes and they handle good, but they look pretty awful. And then, of course, on the other side, you have designers who design bikes and they look great. And then you take them out on the road and they're all over the place. I've had a couple of instances of that where designers bring bikes by and I get on, the brakes don't work and the front end's all screwed up. What you have here is you have Eric Buell, who is the engineer's engineer, designing essentially a race bike for the street, a true sport bike. And then you give it to these guys who are designers and they take his thing one step further and make it look unique. Um, a lot of people might think this is controversial, but I like stuff that looks different. You know, we motorcyclists are pretty conservative. We like it standard fork and you know, all this kind of just regular stuff. I remember when the Honda 750 came out, people said, electric start. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is the future. I mean, I think they designed a great looking bike. More importantly, it's a lot of fun to ride. You know, all the R&D has been done on this. Engineers went through it. It shifts, it handles, it stops, it doesn't overheat. And then of course you add this unique design element to it, of which there are only 47, and you come up with a really interesting product. I'm not going to tell you how much it costs. You can go to their website and ask them because one-off stuff is expensive. But you have something here that I think is uh, it's pretty cool. And it's, it's nice that guys take a chance and do a short run of something like this. And there's only going to be 47 of these. And this is one of them. So I'm glad I got a chance to ride it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Terrific well, job. Pleasure. Nice job. Nice job. Thanks. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>